From reading in the Blanco history book, I know that the first school in the Blanco area, which actually was Pittsburgh, was a log cabin in that area. Can you tell us about that school? Well, uh, it was. It was a log cabin over across the river. And incidentally, I, I wondered for years and years where that was, and I've located it. Oh. I've got uh, actual some historic, I mean some official information of where it was located over there. But anyway, it was a school during the the week and it was church for the Baptist and the Church of Christ and the Methodist every Sunday. And uh, they kept growing over there and finally the Methodists pulled out in 1883 and came across the river and built their own church. Well in later years the Baptists finally did and, and the Church of Christ was the last one that pulled across the river and built their own church. Mm -hmm. But that's where the school actually started here. And in the meantime the Masons wanted to build a university here and they got went through the legislature and got the permission, uh, got the permit and everything, but they couldn't come up with any money. They tried to sell stock for it, but it just wasn't there back in those days, so they right. gave up on it. But they still wanted a school, so they kept working, and they finally got a charter for the Blanco High School. And when they did, they started to work on that, and they got uh, the uh, old bunch that was trying to build the university already had the land, and they they'd even dug a little foundation and even hauled a few rocks and uh, as a result of it they got the land where they were going to build and had all that to start with and they started and built a school up there and uh, it's old uh, original school burned in when 19 and 18 uh, 18 and 90 uh, well they moved 1893 1893 I think it was yes Yes, in December school, of 1893 is when it burned. The school burned, and mm -hmm. that first year they moved to the Methodist Church and the courthouse both. Mm -hmm. But the next year, though, they moved into the courthouse entirely. And it stayed there until they rebuilt that one. And they finally moved out and went back up there, I think 1909, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, in 1919, the state condemned the building. So they moved out and went back to the courthouse again. And they rebuilt that burned out building, tore it down and rebuilt it. Mm -hmm. And uh, from then on, of course, lots of things have changed. Right. So so the building that we see now is, I think, is 1921 is when that building right. opened, that Spanish-style right. right. building. That's mm -hmm. Yes. And and can you describe how that building, You did you go to school in that building? Yes, I did. Yes. What did it look years, like? They when, didn't have 12 years back in those days, right. just 11. Incidentally, I have to brag a little. I had seven years of perfect attendance out of eleven. Oh, that's great! <laughs> that's great. I've been lucky. I haven't right. been sick much. So how so how did the building look when you were in well, school? Well, it was there? six rooms and the auditorium. They had uh, three uh, grammar schools on the left side or west side of mm -hmm. it, and the high school was on the other side of it. And we just switched from one room to another. You started out over here in Ms. Wires. Sudie Wire from, uh, not Sudie Wire, but uh, Ms. Armand Wire from Johnson City taught first grade for 25 or 30 years in Blanco. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that, and, and many of us started out with her. Well, Mrs. Wall came along somewhere along in there, and she started teaching in the grammar school, and she also kept going up a little bit, and she finally got over into the other one. But it was wonderful going to school in all those places. And, Eventually, when we got over into the other one, well, uh, I'll have to tell a story on Ms. Wall here. She liked to pull hair. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Bill Allen and, oh, I don't know, Sidney Page and, and one of the uh, Fox Boys or something was always causing her trouble. And they started, uh, we had something called Brilliantine back in those days, real greasy. I mean <laughs> greasy. It went on your hair. So they just covered and filled the hair full of Brilliantine, and she tried to pull the hair in her finger just slipped through it. <laughs> but she was good at that and also cracking knuckles with a ruler. She was quite a character. Quite a character, yes. And Always you, quite you a know character. Yes, I know remember her, yes. In later years. <laughs> yes, yes. But she's a good teacher, but she was a character. Were there two or three grades in every room? Because if you're going to have elementary school on one side yeah. and high school on the other, you would have to have more than one grade. Well, more in than room. one grade, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
And where the where the where did you get the water? They drilled a well out, the uh, hand dug wells out behind the old building, still there, and uh, that's where they got the water mm -hmm. out of it. Had a water it had, bucket sitting there. Had a boy's there. outhouse and a girl's outhouse. Yeah. Yes. They had yeah. girls on one side and mm -hmm. boys on the other side of the school. Right. They got into the science business, and they built a building out north of the old school. And it was called the science building. It was a, had a laboratory in it mm -hmm. and all the stuff that they used in teaching science of various kinds. And it was also the bookkeeping room. They had bookkeeping class out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, and know, I think it's about 1936, wasn't it, when they built what was the ag room, you know, the, yeah. the agriculture room. And it, they finally got so big there they had to move out and, and build a new room for yes. it. Yes. That room that's now west of the Right. Old bookkeeping room. Right. West of the school. Mm -hmm. and, it, and so that was that was the building until they, for the elementary and the high school, until they built the new high school building, which right. was in the WPA times, 1938-39. Time. Well, uh, back during the Depression, they tried to build that, and uh, we didn't qualify. We didn't have enough poverty here to qualify the WPA. Mm. <clears throat> and about that time, the youth... Uh, Ministra National Youth Administration right. came along and uh, we qualified and they built that school for us. Mm -hmm. Did all the work on the thing. Those boys came from Gillespie County, Hayes County, and Kamal County to Blanco to work every day. But they built the building and that's how come us to have that over there. No, that's good. What to you was the, the most outstanding change you saw in the Blanco schools during that time, that 14 year period? Well, they improved constantly in in the scholastics, mm -hmm. and they kept expanding, and, and uh, they kept going until they got the school we've got today, which is one of the best in the country. Mm -hmm. It's a real, real good school, and that's the reason why a lot of people move out here from San Antonio to get their kids in a blank old mm -hmm. school, because they know it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a big drawing card for us. When you look back at the teachers you had, who were the ones that really stand out in your mind? Well, Carl Buckner was our school superintendent, and he was captured during World War II. Oh, my. And if we had a bad lesson that day or had to turn in a report or something, all we had to do was start talking about the war, and we mm -hmm. were good for an hour. <laughs> We'd lose our whole class, Carl uh -huh. Buckner, and start talking about World War II. Uh -huh. And it happened many, many times. Right. He'd yeah. rather talk about the war than he would teach in history. Else. Yes. And he, he was the history teacher? History teacher, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You remember another teacher that you had that was outstanding? Oh, good gosh, who all that? Ms. Rooks, Sarah Rooks, and, and uh, Sam Brown finally married the English teacher. Alice Bauer was the mm -hmm. name from Seguin, somewhere off down there. I remember those. And... Uh, Ima Smith graduated from Blanco High School and it, during the Depression and she tried to go to school and, and she just couldn't make it, didn't have the money to do it. And she come back and took the last year over again and she was doggone smart that she taught uh, algebra, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she taught a pretty hard subject. Mm -hmm. Our teacher wasn't very good at it and she was. She was a real good teacher. No, that's good. Yeah. And that's the only D I ever made in my life was in the first year of algebra <laughs> in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you look back, what kind of activities did you have? I mean, do you had baseball teams and yes, all Yes, I had things? good baseball teams and, and softball and tennis and basketball, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, did they play football? Oh, goodness, no, football didn't come along until 1942. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, football, the Lions Club put them in the football business. They built a lighted field over in Blanco State Park, mm -hmm. and we even bought all of their equipment, their suits and everything for them. And after and that, the war was over. that was, was six-man football? Six-man to begin yes. with. And uh, when we moved it, they, after the war, they decided they wanted it up here at the school ground, so we moved the thing, paid for that. And uh, also along in there, they went from six to 11 man, and we had to do a little bit of work on the thing then. And we bought the visitors bleachers and they're still in use up there at the baseball field today. Mm. 
I noticed one of the things at the old courthouse when the, um, especially when they used that building in 1921 when they were building the Spanish-style building, because my father graduated from high school in 23, and his name is on the wall with all the characters they, that they played in plays. Did they have plays and those kinds of things in yes, the auditorium? Yes, that's what they were the, there, cast characters in various school plays. Yes, you watch seven yes, of them on there yes. or something like that. Right, but uh, up at the schoolhouse, did, there because I remember the auditorium when it was an auditorium yeah. and not the lunch room or what it is. Uh, did you have plays there where you oh, were yeah. in the play? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where the plays were held. Mm -hmm. Was there a band? Uh, hey, a band come along years and years later too. They didn't have any in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, those seven ca cast of characters that are up on the wall, I've been trying my best to find somebody that could go over and restore them. You can't hardly read them. Right, right. And if we don't do something, they're going to be They'll gone. They'll be gone, yes. I and I wonder to, if there's anything like that in the in the school building itself. Do you know of I anything know like that, that in there? No. The only thing, one thing I might know, if we could find somebody that's got their names on there and... and they may, their families may still have a, mm -hmm. the playbooks or cast of characters or play right, something right. in there. Now you talk about the things that you have, which you'll bring and share with us. What are some of the things that you have from the Blanco schools? Oh, they're just a little bit of everything. Uh, I, as I told you, I have a list of all the graduates in there, mm -hmm. and I have a list of the history like I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at it. I should have looked at it before it came up here, but I haven't looked at it in a long time. Right. I noticed uh, in the Blanco County history book that the first class that graduated had only two or three. Two of them. Two Stubbs of them. and uh, Brigham and Stubbs. Right, that I it? think so. I think, I, I don't recall the names, but just two or, you know, and the next year just a few others. Yeah. So let me ask you this question because I know when they farmed the school, when they decided to farm the high school and they sold the stock, they had to raise like $10,000. Uh, then they decided later to incorporate what they called the, the free public school. So yeah. they had an elementary school that was a free school, but this was a tuition school. Is that right? The first yeah, high school they, was a tuition school. Back in those school. days, you had to pay tuition when you got up there higher up. Right. Do you, do because you, they weren't getting enough tax money to run right. it. Right. Do you recall uh, what the tuition was for I high school? Have, it's been too many years ago. Right. I, I was curious about what. We'll have to try to see how much that was because it was, it was very interesting because uh, I noticed that when they uh, farmed the, when they finally got to the school, they decided to combine the public school with the tuition school. Mm -hmm. And evidently when that building, that first two-story building was built, uh, they had both elementary and, and high school in that building. Yeah. So that was kind of the forerunner of having one building with elementary on one part mm -hmm. and the high school on the other. So. But it was interesting that they pulled all of the public school into Together. that into that school building. Uh, and when they formed the uh, school district in 1901, uh, then that's, is that when they got to um, get tax money? Yeah. That's when they formed the independent school district? Now they were also, what they call that, uh, common school district. Yes. They were a common school district there for a while, and the last one in the county was a colony school down in Peyton Colony. Peyton Colony. That was the last one they finally did away with them. Right. Well, and like Twin Sisters School and all the well, little Twin Sisters schools. School, what happened there, the uh, superintendent broke his leg in the middle of the year. Uh -huh. And uh, they voluntarily started coming to the Blanco. Uh, asked to come to the Blanco School, and mm -hmm. they did. They integrated. We didn't do it. They did it. Right. But there were many schools in the county. There were Flat Creek schools. Oh, yeah, school. we had them all over the country. Live Oak, Flat Creek, Chimney Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, my aunt and uncle were country school teachers all their lives, and they taught them. Now, who was that? The Ira Ma Massey, Massey and, mm -hmm. and his wife. And McKinney, McKinney School. They taught there. Mm -hmm. taught that was, it, that uh, was where Aunt Edna taught also, yeah. uh -huh. Edna Smith. Taught at many mm -hmm. of these other schools, too. Right, right. And when did all of, when did they just gradually then they move just into gradually the came Blanco, into Blanco district? One in time over a long period of time. How how what effect did transportation have on that? Because well, I mean, we had no school buses. It was they right. come in horse or horse and buggy. Do you remember when they had the first school bus? I wonder what long, year that I was. I don't remember what year. It because might I be. went to, I started to school in 1941 and they had school buses. They had buses then. And the, and I thought that was great because the 
to ride the big yellow school bus was the best thing about going to school there for a while, you know, because I was watching. So they'd had it a few years before then. So. Well, Morris Learson came to school in a horse and buggy from down on 165, and uh, I used to jump on the back of it and sit in the back with my feet hanging off, bum a ride to save walking. See, I lived, what, 11 or 12 blocks from school. Right. And uh, incidentally, Last two years of high school, I opened the filling station at 5.30 in the morning and worked until I had time to go home and eat breakfast and get to school. Oh. And uh, that was quite interesting, too. I can't imagine. Yeah. Well, they had a sidewalk station there where the food store is now. Oh. The fact is, you can still see where the pumps were. The tanks are still up buried now which, there. Now, which food, which, you're, where you're talking about? Uh, the north side of the square where the hardware used oh, to be. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Where the real food store yeah, is? Okay, food. that's where the filling station was. Well, see that two Mr. buildings. Chris, Mr. Chris had that? Yeah. Okay. And the so hardware you worked didn't there before school. Yes. It was over where uh, the pottery and the uh, mm -hmm. lavender thing okay. is now. Right. It didn't burn. It was the other two buildings that burned. Right. And uh, when they did, that's in 1939. And uh, when they burned, uh, he and I went all over the country trying to see what kind of fixtures we wanted in there. And we finally found something that we liked and mm -hmm. incorporated into what other things. Right. And we finally had a, a what is it, some sash door company in San Antonio. You can't think of the name right quick. But they built those fixtures for us. Oh, okay. Okay. And then later on, Johnson City, uh, the same bunch owned the Blanco and the Johnson City and eventually the Burnett County Supply. Okay. Well, they turned around and duplicated that bunch of fixtures for Johnson City. And when they acquired the Burnett, they then turned around and built another complete set for that store. Oh, so all yeah. three sets, three stores had the same right, store right. fixtures in them. So you actually had a job before school. And when did you graduate from high school? 35. 35. Yeah. Okay, so you had a job for, say, from 33, 34, yeah. 35, working at 5. So the kids that c complain about having to go off and work today after school or before school didn't have anything on you. No. no. So you graduated in 1935. 35. Okay. And can so, I brag a little? Huh? Can I brag yes, a little? you can brag a little. I was valedictorian. Oh, wonderful. And I still have the five uh, scholarships that gave me the Cedar Chest at home. Is that right? Where, where, what scholarships did you well, get? Well, at almost any state school. Right. Uh, I had planned on going to university because I had a sister living down there and I'd had free room and board. You're talking about in Austin. In Austin. Uh huh. But what happened? I borrowed a hundred dollars to get out of school with from Blank on the National Bank. So I went to work, I got out of school Friday and went to work Monday morning to pay back that hundred dollars and when the, I paid that back and in the summer I just kept working never did quit. Yeah, where where were you working? Hardware store. At the hardware store. Yeah. There yes. wasn't any hardware when I started there. Right. Okay. It, it was grew just with me, and I grew with and... it. <laughs> and right. uh, anyway, I never did leave, but to this day I don't regret it. Well, you've been here all your life except for the time you were in the military yeah. service and you've done a lot of things in Blanco. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go back to the school and think about the school because I I recall when I came to school in 41, which uh was a long time ago too. They had these great big pot-bellied stoves right. in every classroom. That's right. <laughs> Bulger Johnson killed a skunk one night. Ah. <laughs> and he poured that skunk musk all over that stove. Oh no! And run everybody out. I can't imagine. In Ms. Wall's classroom. Oh, he that was, was a stinker. Oh, I guess. <laughs> I guess that was a stinker that too. That was a stinker too. That too. So, did you ever have to carry wood for that, or oh, did yes. the janitor, oh, or did yeah. you have to? Boys and had to had, go get the wood. And swept too. We've, oh really? You had to take your turn monitoring how, it was how, called. How did you sweep the floors? What did you put on them? Oh. Uh, you remember it's that red, sawdust? Uh, what do you call it? Well, it was that oily sawdust Real type oily, stuff. Yeah, but it's got a name. I don't know what it was called, but I remember, you know. Greasy as it could greasy be. Greasy as could be, yes. And you poured that on there and swept it out. Yes. Keep the dust down. Right, right. And so there was a so hand dug well, outside toilets, outside outhouses. The boys had to carry the wood in a lot of the times yeah. and sweep the floors and clean the blackboards. You yeah, ever dust didn't erasers? Have any. Did Janitors have, in those no. days at all. Yeah, did you ever dust erasers and clean yes, the blackboards? Yes, did that too. That was part <laughs> yeah, of it. That was part of it. Teachers might uh, punish you for doing something to make you 
dust the racers. Right. But it was kind of fun, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What kind of playground equipment did you have? You remember? Uh, very little. Had baseball bats and, and uh, baseballs and, and the playground balls. And uh, they furnished tennis balls. Mm hmm. But they didn't furnish the rackets. The kids had to have their own rackets. Right. I was working and, and I didn't. Uh, to, it didn't get to participate too much. I played tennis more than I did anything else. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, they had where the, were the tennis courts? About where they down are down there next to the far south where the bus barn is. Oh, now. okay, yes, yes. They uh -huh. were way down there. Right, right. And it was uh, oh, lots of crazy things back in those days. <laughs> Such it's, as uh, what? <laughs> things happening. Uh huh. And. Uh, Mrs. Wall always kept us in kind of a stirred up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with her hair pulling and her hair knuckle pulling. cracking and all this kind of bit, so you got even with her, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone got even with her. Yeah. Well, and what did well, she teach? Well, the guy by the name of Reese was a teacher here for uh -huh. a long time. He was a principal, I think, at one time. And Alice Bauer, I told you a while ago, right. she married Sam Brown. And uh, the other lady, Married Moose Skeen, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, what I, I called her name a while ago. Oh, I don't recall. No. But her and Alice came here uh -huh. together. Okay. And they lived with uh, the Crosleys. Right. They roomed and boarded with the Crosleys. Right. All the time they were here. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of other teachers. Uh, Mayfield was superintendent for a long, long time too. And the last time they had a big homecoming here several years ago. Uh, W.L. had kept in touch with him, and he lived in way off from here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talked him into coming back. He came oh, back for nice. that year. Yeah, yeah. And Lester Cobb was down at uh, near Houston. Can't think of the name of the town now. And he just it hadn't been too many years since he retired from down there. Right. But he was a real good superintendent. But unfortunately, this is not for publication. Mm -hmm. He got railroaded. Ah. Uh, Bob Claypeck was on the school board, uh -huh. and his boy, one of his sons, got in trouble, and yeah. and, uh, and there's a lot of politics in school. And Lester wouldn't take up for him, yeah. and he railroaded. He got yeah. rid of. Him. He yeah. railroaded him out next yeah. year. Well, is there anything else that was outstanding about this? You know, about your school career, or about the schools, or whatever? You still take an interest in the schools? Oh yes. However, I after my kids all got out. I got off the board. I decided it was time to let somebody mm -hmm. else that had children in there rather than me. So that's when I retired from the school board. Right. I was already postmaster in those days. Well, did you ever foresee the t time when we would have as many different school buildings as we have now well, in Blanco? Well, I guess not, probably. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, it how is much amazing. the system has grown? We've got schools that we've got now in that middle school. And Second, well, it used to be high school in two years. What we outgrew yes. and had to build a new one. Yes. Well, this has been fun, Roy. This is a good first experience, you uh, know. And I appreciate you coming in today. Talking about Sudi Wire. Uh, she taught here for 25 years. And when Miss she Sudi. Died, Miss Sudi. Yes. I was a Paul Bear at her funeral. Is that right? Yeah. She taught me piano lessons. Yeah. Well. Uh, what did she teach? Uh, Ms. Wall. No, I mean, it was Wire. First Sudi. grade. First grade. Yeah. yeah. First grade teacher. She started mm -hmm. everybody. Oh, all. okay, okay, yeah. Well, Marilyn took a piano lesson from Clara Glower all the right. years she was in. She uh, started out with flutophones. Mm hmm. And. Uh, well, she was my Spanish teacher. And Jeanette started out with flute, I mean uh, clarinet. And when Patty came along, she played the flute. Ah. Who was a band director at that time. He had a very high-priced flute that somebody stole. Oh, my. Yeah. While he was here. Yeah. They never did find it, hmm. best, of, best I remember. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Well, well, Patty, she had a pretty good one I bought her. And when uh, Tammy, one of the granddaughters up in, uh, oh, up near Dallas, Louisville, she got in a band and we gave it to her. And she used it for a while, but then she decided she wanted a better one, so she retired it and mm -hmm. gave it back to Patty, I guess. Right. And bought one of her right. own. Right. 
But the band, the band here in Blanco has has uh, been a over the years been a good band. Then they up had until some this up recent, recent, but now it's back dogs, again. And now it's back now on it's top back again. again. But because I can remember going into that main school auditorium uh, when I was the mascot for the band, you know, and uh, Billy Byers played what I've forgotten the saxophone or something like that, and. I had to play an instrument in order to be in the band, even though I was only five years old. So I had cymbals, and I still have my cymbals. You ever go to a band concert yes, in that I building? Yes, I did. Lots of them. Yes. Well, Billy, you know, uh, he could play anything. Yes. It make any difference. You hand him any instrument that you think about, he'd play it. Yes. He was that good. Yeah. Sort of like Vernon Trainer. Is that right? He could do the same thing. The Vernon Trainer went through the school system here. Oh yeah, he graduated yeah. here years and years ago. Mm -hmm. First cousin. And he had his own band, and he played, he was the, uh, his band was uh, WOAI's band for years and years. Oh, is that right? I didn't know that about and him. he mm -hmm. played, they played for dances all the time, Saturday night. Mm hmm He was a real musician. Uh, my granddad would come blank over with his fiddle and come to visit us, and Vernon would come in and play the piano, or my mother would play the one, she could play the piano. Couldn't read a note of music. Right, but played by ear. Yeah. Played by ear. Yeah. But the uh, first thing you know, you look out on the street and it's full of people that come all over <laughs> town to listen to that music. Well, you lived, many people is that when you lived radio. in the phone? Is that when you lived in the yeah, telephone, telephone building? Hall. Yeah, so you were right on the square. Not many yeah. people even had radios. No, that's true. They were pretty scarce. Yeah, what year was that? Oh gosh, way back on the <laughs> in way, the twenties, twenties, twenties and thirties. Right, right. So things were a little different back in those days. Like you say, there was no, very few radios, no TV, of course, yeah. and so people played games like you know dominoes, yeah. played baseball. Blanco had its own baseball team. Had a good one too. Yes, very good one. And uh, and and George they made dad, my father and my uncle. Goldwyn. Yeah, and, Arthur. And George. Yes. Chamberlain and. Yeah, Floyd Moore. All those people. Floyd Moore yes. was pitcher. Shorty Wadsworth. All those Shorty people. Shorty was catcher. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Floyd liked to run his arm. He pitched too hard in a game, and threw his arm away, and he had ah. to quit pitching. Yeah. yeah. But they played over. It was where the marker, where the CCC right. camp used to be. Right. That was their field. Right. See, I'm a bad boy for them. I used to go to all the right? games, ride that old truck with my feet hanging off of it. Uh huh. Oh, interesting. See, we'll have to talk about that on one of these taping <laughs> sessions.